Coming to you live from San Francisco, California, it's time for Zig in the Zone with Ralph Zig Tycho. Zig and Pauly in the Zone. It How is. How are you, Zig and Pauly? <laughs> it is kind of cool. It is the Zig and Pauly Zone right now. Right. What's happening, my man? Well, uh, I'm excited. Um, we're going to welcome my uh, camp sister at Kittatinny Camp in the Poconos, when we were uh, a little younger, younger, a, a younger. Little, <laughs> right, a little less, uh, a little less formed. How, how about that? Barbara Burton Stewart, welcome back to the network. You did a podcast, not a video podcast with us um, years ago. And uh, I'm glad you're here, darling. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you both. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for getting me on. Yes. Um, however you did it, you did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. And you can see <laughs> us now, right? No. Oh, well, okay. she'll, she'll be able to see us in post. Yes, it'll be, it'll be just fine. Um, I'm sure. Putting off seeing us is not always um, unpleasurable, by the way. <laughs> We do the best we can, but we have um, we have a, a we have a face and body for radio. Yeah, we're doing video, so that's right. what we're doing. And um, uh, boy, there's so much to talk to you about. You're from Brooklyn and living in Florida. I live in beautiful, sunny, friggin' hot Florida. And I'm via, like uh, via the wind from the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Via Atlanta, you lived in Atlanta. No, I lived in Florida before. Oh, wouldn't oh. you know? Of all times, my shrink calls me. Shrink calls me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, wait, we're getting Never. an interruption, but there you go. We all have shrinks <laughs> to call us. Some of us respond. Some of us lose their numbers. And who's the pup? This is Panna. Aww. This is my lover girl. She yeah. loves being yeah. petted and being kissed. And she heard me talking to somebody and she said, I'm taking her time. Oh, <laughs> she is a sweetie. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Daisy doesn't come over to me, so I don't know if you'll ever get to see Daisy. Daisy is yeah. a Frenchie. She's that we rescue. We don't buy dogs we rescue does and, mr um, come over once in a while to be on the air <laughs> well not not um not daisy no daisy but, bar but how how about bob can we get him on the air uh if he opens the door <laughs> <laughs> so right. he's in the air conditioning he's a smart man i think yeah he's inside i think he's paying bills or I don't know what he's doing, whatever he's doing, as long as he's not bothering me, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about I mean, lately he's been Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> Let's talk and about we'll Kittacini Camp. Um, what it was like having an eight week experience every year um, in the Pocono oh. Mountains when you were from Brooklyn and I was from Queens and we were getting some outdoors, um, not a bunch of concrete around us all the time. Mm -hmm. What was your first year at camp like? Well, you weren't my first year at camp off my first year at Kittatinny, because Kittatinny, I started in 1960. Okay. Um, but I started camp, whether you believe this or not, it's the truth. I started camp in 1951, before I was four, and my mother was supposed to come up and be a division head. And at the last minute, um, they gave her some information that did not comport with what the original agreement was. And she said, well, I won't be coming, but my kids will. <laughs> and I was there. I was not even four years old. I was a camper. Wow. Wow. And they didn't have and they didn't have Pioneer Row. 
Let me um, ask you this. Was it good for you being in camp or was in, in the early years or did you feel disengaged from your family? I, you know, I always had, um, I don't like, remember so much like the first year or two when I was like three and four. I don't totally remember that, but I always had a very very low ego and i always felt i wasn't part of the group and it wasn't because i was younger because even later on i became of camp age and you know, i was in with people my age but i always felt as like an outsider um but i um i always you know the, i come home and i'd say i hate it i don't want to go back and like my first year kid at tinny my parents came up to visit and I said, I want to go home. I hate it. And my mother said, okay, you'll come home. And of course, the last year I was crying and singing, um, for all we know. <laughs> so <laughs> you're, I went from, you're stuck you know, with it. You know, it was funny. I, I it. came home and said, I hate it. I want to go back to Kittatinny each year. But I just wanted to say, first of all, I don't know if you remember Gary Kaufman. He recently the passed. name. He recently the way, the passed name. away. Who was the one who worked in, in the um, canteen? Yes, yes. Um, is that is that Gary? J two, his brother were campmates, and Gary and I were in touch over the years. I hope that he and Jay got it together at the end um as most siblings do eventually and i hope i get it together with my brother who was also a kid of Tinneyite, and who he and i got along only in the eight weeks each summer that we would because you didn't spend each day with each other <laughs> we stayed with each other i visited him in his bunk um and really felt like brothers and uh, but you weren't yeah but you didn't have to be on top of him or him on top of you all the time well my sister and i and my brother well, we, there were three of us in public we were the three of us so it's my brother my sister and me yeah. and um my brother unfortunately passed away. It's going to be 20 years. Oh. Can't believe it. I still can't accept it. I, you know, and when I, I want to know something about my sister, she never knew anything and she still doesn't know anything. Uh, oh. And um, so I think, oh, I'll ask for, oh no, it's not here to ask, you know, and there's nobody else left for me to ask. No, he, he did the horseback riding at Kittatinny. Yeah, he, Gary worked with Gary. At down at the horses, and he stayed a year and a half. And the second year, and he was he had a girlfriend, and he used to go visit her in Philadelphia. And I guess he really loved her. And then came back to camp, and she broke up with him, and she started going out with somebody else. And I think that really kind of broke his heart. And he developed asthma and went home and never came back to camp. Except maybe to visit, I don't know. But um, but I was there <laughs> for yeah. all of it. Um, but uh, there were the three of us, and in the house we would always fight. And uh, but in camp, like as you said, you know, we would see each other every you know, what's it, Monday and Donnerstag. So you know, we we weren't so close because. We weren't on top of each other, so it was a lot better. Um, now that Rick is gone, and my sister, who's this? Ah, get away, get away. Am I still there? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Now the Urban League wants me. Um, mm -hmm. So my my sister is a, uh, a Trumpy. So we speak, but we have to. <laughs> you have to mind your P's and Q's. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I try. I, I'm pretty good 99% of the time. 
But every once in a while, I, there's something I just can't let it fly by. There are things now that I'd like to say, but I won't. But, you know, I because I'm as bad with DeSantis as I am with Trump. And I keep saying to her, but you don't live here. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You know, when you can't do this and you can't do that. said, if your daughter, her daughter was pregnant, had a baby girl, everything is fine. Thank you very much. But if your daughter were pregnant, and had a miscarriage in New York. She was living in New York. Not a problem. I mean, she could get the help. I don't mean not a problem, but, you know, she could get the help. But if she were living down here, she couldn't get the help. You know, because well, Paul and I, law. last episode, we were just ranting about why um, women vote Republican. We just, have, it is Bob. just so beyond me that I we're talking about women getting the right to vote in 1920, the year my mother was born, and it's gone upward, not downward, and now mm -hmm. it's going off the fucking cliff. Now it's going back to nine, back to the twenties. Crazy, um, absolutely maybe, maybe crazy. the fifties. It is. I mean, I marched. I was at the march on Washington after we already had whatever it was, you know, we needed. And um, I was sitting on the lawn, and Whoopi Goldberg was there. And she got up, and they had the jumbotron. So I saw her basically on the jumbotron. And she got up there, and she was holding a hanger. And she said, Do you know how many people have asked me why I have a hanger? And I looked at my cousin, and she looked at me and said, well, you know why? You know, because that was the method symbol of, of it. That was the symbol. Yeah. And unfortunately, there were women actually getting infections and dying. And dying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, dying. And, and, and for the life of me, Bobby, neither back, of us can understand why anybody would vote for people. Because if, that, if they want to, that's where they can start. Well, they, what they want to do is they want to, um, he wants to be king. And they're willing to let him because he'll do whatever they want him to do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he would have come out and, and um, look, him of all people would have come out and voted against birth control. I mean, he had his, his daughter, Tiffany, I guess because his uh, wife became his wife because she was pregnant. Um, probably would have put up a stink and she was Miss Florida, so people would have listened. But I don't know how many abortions he had, you know, his, the, of the, of the, uh, 24 well, or 29 or 49 to... people that have come forward and said that he molested them. How many of them had mis had, um, abortions? Right. So, you know, they're, but they're trying now to, to send us back to, they want to make it a, I don't, and I don't say this with, with um, any malice or, you know, towards, but, but it's, they want a white Christian nation, but they want, it's the white nationalists. It's not just white Christian people. It's the white nationalists who are doing, you know, who have all this that they want. Oh, again, uh, she's gone. You're Whoever just a popular person. Your dance card is full, dear. No, I wasn't. I was never, <laughs> never. <laughs> I think when I met Ralph, he said, where were you? And I said, against the wall. <laughs> you were the wallflower? No, I don't believe it. I was it. the wallflower. <laughs> yeah, I was the wallflower. I remember camp would go on. Um, they'd load us on a bus, and we'd go to the skating rink. Um, or bowling or the movie. <laughs> and so I wore a, if you can see this, and you will later on, um, Shirt that I bought when I was in Florida, staying at your house. But what did and, you get? what's the shirt? And I'm I'm trying to look, but I'm looking back. Up. All right. Um, <laughs> it is the Flash Pirates Saloon. I don't that remember the significance, but oh, I is that where we went to eat? Is that where we went to eat with Iris? Um, I I don't know. But getting back to Kittatinny Camp, 
we did mm-hmm. experience a wonderful reunion that you were nice enough to drive me to in Florida. Um, Miami. Miami. Miami Beach. Two places, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking to see Bernie, Bernie, but that was just down the road. That was that, wasn't that, and that was wonderfully um, cathartic for me. I got to tell him a lot of things. And, Did you uh, know him? Oh, yeah. Did you know him? Yeah. Because now I thought you were there one or two years. So what was your last year? In 62. And that was his first year? Yes. Um, so I got to know him very well. He was, uh, and I was a big fan, a big basketball fan, Erasmus. Um, my and cousins. we were his, we were his, we were his, his, um, Rivalry. one of his rivals. Right. <laughs> um, um, so it was I fun was- and his, uh, his daughter was charming. Um, was the, she's a dentist. Did you know that? I know, and um, they have a son that works for the Raiders, and uh, yeah, um, so that part was great. But more than that, you and I got to go to Miami, and we got to go, but not more. Even more than that, we got to spend a lot of time together. Right, and uh, and we got to see uh, a kid at Tinny Camp icon. Uh, Iris Rate, and, right? And, we spent- and I, I went to uh, Bernie's funeral, and I went with I don't think you knew Gail um, Blumberg, but um, but she's a couple years behind us anyway. So, but uh, while we were at the funeral, Judy Race was sitting behind me, uh. and she has not changed. She looks exactly the same. Judy Race. Yes. Um, Fructa. Yes. Fructa. Um, rest in peace, uh, uh, Fructa. Um, you are a, a great, funny guy. And I, I tell Judy all the time that because uh, I went into comedy, and a lot of it was, was because of, um, of Mickey. Mickey's dry sense of humor. He was. Oh, at, I used to love when he do Jomo Yavade. And, yes, you know, and all his, all he was all, kids. and he wrote the, a lot of the clarions and um, was really responsible for setting a comedic tone where people didn't take it all that seriously because they called it the color war at that time. And oh, no, no. It, no, you can't say that. <laughs> no, when I went, they it was the color war. And they changed it well, the, to, right. to something else, the color, the color contest. The color contest. Right. Mm-hmm. And, well, uh, the other camp that I went to, that I, I went to both camps for seven years, and then I went to another camp for one year when I was six, I think, and it was with my cousins and my brother, you know. And I hated it. I mean, if I thought the others were bad, this one was horrendous. But and also, I guess because I felt left out because I was younger than everybody. But um, uh, we did. We called. It, we also changed it to color contest. So I guess all the camp camp owners got together one year right. and said. But okay, there were some intense competitions, and he would. Mm-hmm. He was among those who had a way of throwing some levity out there when competition got a little um, hairy, let's say. And he was also one of those who contributed to me doing the only physical thing I I do well. (laughs) I'm not touching that one. No, I won't either. (laughs) And I can't can't affirm or disaffirm, but go ahead. (laughs) It's tennis. I love playing tennis. Oh, there we go. I I can't hit the. I mean, now I don't know if it had to do with either of my eyesight, which is not fabulous. Which is, I mean, it's not horrendous, but you know, my my um, the side vision. I can't think of the word. Like, <laughs> I couldn't couldn't get the ball. Peripheral. And my and my feet, 
my feet always hurt me, and they still do. Yeah. <laughs> All these years later. Well, uh, Mickey was a great instructor, and uh, there was Joe Blatt and his dad Milt that taught tennis mm -hmm. at that camp. And um, Milt was good at tennis too. Pardon? Milt was good at tennis too. Yes, he was. He was, um, and I'll never forget he and Joel playing going down to those courts that were quite dilapidated what, the courts down by the water right right you got a good memory and um but playing together and they'd um and they took me the blats um we're all from queens and they took me to the u.s open and oh uh, wow so i went to see Sisius and um, and uh, other Vic Sisius. Who, who was the first one you said? <laughs> Mil the Blatts. No, I know, but they you Vic saw who? Sisius. Anyway, they uh, he was <laughs> one of those playing that year. Um. Anyway, I got to see the U.S. Open in Forest Hills, um, thanks to their invite and. Um, it was good. What did you enjoy most about the camp experience over a lifetime of being in camp? Not just Kittatinny, but um, the camp me. experience. Where'd I go? Do you still see me? Do you uh, hear me? Well, do put it back the way it was. There you go. Okay. That's what I was trying to do here. Okay. There we go. Okay. There you I just go. had to change my position because it now was put in, your uh, hand my back down. was in the sun. My back was in the sun, and I just okay. It's like my, what was you know, your my, your best, my best experience there at camps? My best experience. Um, I enjoyed drama, and I enjoyed being in the plays. Okay. And um, what else? That that was really my favorite. And um, the year, I don't know if you were there, the year that um, you probably were. Um, what's his name? He was one of the three killed in Mississippi. Um you know who I'm talking about? No. There were three guys killed in Mississippi. They were freedom riders. One of them was from Kittatinny. One of them was the was the uh, drama counselor at Kittatinny. Oh, I didn't and know that. Was, yeah, and he was such a nice guy. He would give you the shirt off his back. He would, you know, he was just... Um, I, I got my glasses. There's some bird over there that I, I don't know what it is. And it's, I, you know, I still see the birds. Maybe it's okay. a cardinal. Yeah, that was a, big, that was a big cardinal. tragedy. What did you do? Where are you now? Okay. Now I've lost you again. No, we're here. Okay. I see. No, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> so you're going to be looking at you when we're talking. Well, that's okay. Okay. Well, that's. Well, we're yeah. getting you I'm on. Sorry. And there's I'm Ralph. Sorry. Now Ralph can talk and he'll be on screen. All right. I don't see him. Barb, what would you like to share about your camp experience um, with us without adjusting my camp your camera? Experience. Huh? Uh, my camp experience. I. Oh, there goes. The, I wish I had the camera facing the other direction. The, little, the two dogs are together. Um, hmm. you know, I, in retrospect, I mean, I was unhappy more than I was happy, but I think that was part of my depression that I, you know, didn't know about that I had. Um, and it certainly wasn't the food. Um, I think my favorite experiences were drama. Okay. And when the water wasn't too cold, 
<laughs> take going down going down to the um I don't know which way to go here. Who going was your favorite the, counselor at Kittatinny? Well, for three years I had Wendy Hankin as my counselor. Rest in peace, and Wendy. She passed away. Uh to the best of my knowledge, I think she has. I'll have to look that up because I didn't hear that and I didn't I had her you know I spoke to her a few years ago I guess it was more than a few but I had no idea I'll have to look um and but she was a great counselor um as I said we had her for I had her for three years same campers same counselors and actually my you know a lot of times that I would be teased or what they or what they would say today is um i would be a bullied um not so much bullied like i wasn't hit or anything like that i just wasn't part of the group you know um the philly group came together they all knew each other um gail steinberg was in my bunk and she brought barbara zittema with her and they were together um Janie Lerner was the only one. She was next to me in my in the bunks, and um, she was nice to me. And she was about. Didn't you have Lenore who, Weiss in your bunk at one time? No, she was she was a bunk ahead of me. I liked her. She was a nice girl. I remember she was a girlfriend. So did I. Yeah, we kissed <laughs> under the apple tree. Her and I. Oh well, I didn't because I was busy standing up, holding up the buildings. You know. Well. Um. But. Um, but I remember, but down by the artesian well, I liked that because the water was good and cold, and that's all I drank. So, um, what else did I like? Um, see, my feet always hurt, so I really didn't want to go on hike. Like we'd hike to Dingman's, or we'd hike to um, Dingman's Ferry. Uh, and by the time I got to the top of the hill, my feet were killing me and everyone's just walking along <laughs> and i was in pain and I can't take another step <laughs> but you know who knew in those days um and they still kill me i had i just had surgery i told you i think i had surgery on my right left foot and my right leg went kaput yeah, I'm so sorry you're going um through all this stuff oh well, well, they you know, sucks I, I, did you check well, your warranty? Did you see if you still have that cover? You know what? He was going to take me out back and shoot me already. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, make life easier for him, I guess. Well, but, at least he um, can carry a gun. Trump can't carry a gun. And he's a neighbor of yours, too. Doesn't he live right who? across the, the way? Who? Trump? She lives so oh, close can, that she could throw a rock and hit Mar-a-Lago. He can have a gun here. Oh no! Because it, I don't know. He it's can a have federal a gun here thing. because you don't need you don't even need a permit here. Well, you don't need a, a permit to have a nuclear bomb secret here. Well, either. that's true. But, but you don't need in New York. You don't need to have a permit either if you don't have a gun. Okay. <laughs> but here, you don't even need to have a permit. Right. If you have a gun. <laughs> this is a strange um, state you live Florida. in. This is Please a strange Florida. state you live in. And um, <laughs> there's no denying it. No, nope. um, I have no homeowners insurance. Is, the, story we read a f the story we read a couple weeks ago, I think, was a gentleman in Florida. It always seems like it's a gentleman in Florida. So oh, I'm he, he, he actually got in trouble for having... He had lost his his um, his emotional support. Was a crocodile or alligator? He was in Georgia. He was visiting in Georgia. Had it in a pen, and I guess it got out. And then one of the neighbors complained, but he was really from Florida, and so they had yeah, actually sent one of those people out to grab the alligator or crocodile uh, and put it somewhere where it was safe to be released. But I guess this guy had raised it from a hatchling. Maybe well, got eaten by an alligator. Um, yeah, it probably it probably got <laughs> eaten by a real one instead of the yeah. Well, and then it was see you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. Did you hear I that? I just set him up for that. 
I totally set him up for that. He owes me big time. I do. Paulie does it. He writes me during the week. What can I set you up for? Because I could well, not live a fart at a Boston Tea Party. Uh, uh, that's right. I am basically the Ed McMahon to his Johnny Carson. Is what we're trying to say. Hey yo. Hey yo. No, it's reverse. I'm just telling you. Paulie does it professionally. I did it professionally for a while, and memorizing those lines was difficult for me. And um, what would you like to leave us with today? Mm, let's see. Um, an iced sheet cake. <laughs> sheet, oh, sheet cake. <laughs> hey, tell me about Victoria, how she's doing, your granddaughter, uh, who's the apple my of your eye. So I'll beam. She ignores me, but I'll beam because uh, I'm a grandmother, you know. Oh, grandma. But she's going to be 16 and she'll be getting her driver's license. She's doing driver's ed in the fall. And, um, She's in high school. She was on the varsity softball team as a freshman with a jacket. Mm -hmm. And apparently somebody stopped her at school and said, uh, oh, nice jacket. Your boyfriend give it to you? And she said, no, it's mine. <laughs> so she was kind of proud of that. Yeah. And um, she's a, she is a, uh, um, a junior umpire paid and um she she does the middle school she's done under the net i don't know what else she does because i don't you know i'm just here um and she makes as much as i did i guess um and she loves softball and she you know she hopes to get a softball scholarship her parents with all they've spent hope she gets a softball scholarship too. Yeah. Hey, would you? Um, oh, I was going to say, I thought you were done. He, he almost no, cut sorry, you off I there. Say, I'm sorry? I said he almost cut you off there. That's why he stopped. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. That's right. And she's also into, she's, and she's, so you'd think she's a tomboy, but she's also very into makeup. And she she's a great makeup artist. And there have been kids at school that asked her if she would do their makeup for prom. So. Wow. You know, go. She and she wanted to be a vet for a long time, but I don't know where she is now. <laughs> I, hey, no I wanted her. to be a vet, oh, yeah, and yeah, right I had to go through the Air Force to get that way. So it wasn't <laughs> all that much of a pleasure. Barb, would you come back and see us again real soon? Anytime, anytime. Uh, I and, really um, love chatting with you. I I really love the person that you became. You had curly hair, you were tiny, and um, no, it wasn't straight. I had straight. Now it's curly, but oh. I had straight. Well, <laughs> it, I remember those days, um, <laughs> and we'll try to arrange to get you a surprise guest who was a Kittatinny person next time. That would be wonderful, and uh, next time... I'll get Victoria here. I oh, that would be great. That, Who's that? That is the gentleman, uh, part of the team that just cleaned my house. Oh, that. that's why I'm sitting out in the front. Well, <laughs> could you send them over here to clean the studio? Yeah, we need some help. We we look like a few bachelors. My dog's toys on the floor next to the dog bowl. We've got we've got soda cans or seltzer cans everywhere, like they used to be beer cans. So. Yeah, uh, Barbara. Pleasure well, meeting you. you. <laughs> pleasure meeting you virtually. We loved having well, you on. Thank you. thank you. It was my pleasure. Uh, like I said, please I come back again. What was that, dear? I, will, I said I just basically sit here and look at the four walls, or the or the flora, and you want me to show you the flora and fauna? Sure. Uh, oh yes. Uh, is it? Or I have to turn it over. Is that better? Wait, hold on. Let's get oh, you. That's your backyard. There we go. Hold yeah. on. Let's get the backyard. There we go. There's, there's Daisy's tush. <laughs> that was worth the and price of admission right there. 
All and right. Um, again, thank you, uh, Barbara, Bert, and Stewart for joining us. In the zone. In the zone with Barbara. Thank you, my dear. Both of you, thank you so much for having me. No problem. You have a good day. All right, you guys. Come visit me in Florida. You too, Paul. Yeah, well, well, we'll we'll stick ourselves both in a box and ship us out there. Okay, uh, we'll be in a box <laughs> soon enough. Yeah. Believe me. Believe us. <laughs> Believe us. So, thank you, dear. Thank you for joining us um, again, guys. That was uh, Barbara Burton Stewart joining us. We're back here live in Ed Studios. Zig, that's two more in the can for you. Two more in the can. Barbara's interview will play next week. Um, we just did our kibitzing one earlier. Oh, we did a kibitzing interview that uh, can't be beat. Wow, it just shows that us old timers can do this. Uh, speak for yourself. I'm old. <laughs> you're young. I'm old in my eyes, but that's okay. It is the Zig and Polly B in the Zone show. All right, guys. Uh, for myself, the Zig man, and the rest of us here at Ed Studios. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week, right, bud? We certainly, certainly, certainly. We'll see you at the show. That's at, right. At the show, yeah, that's the ticket. We'll have a show. We'll build the barnyard and shit. Um, Barb, uh, thank you again, and adios, everybody. Be well. <laughs>